Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can improve our drum beats, how we can take something that's quite a simple pattern and how we can make it more interesting. We're going to take a look at quite a few different techniques and it's hopefully going to give you some good inspiration to get more interesting drums going on in your songs, get a little bit creative with what you can do on it. So let's see how we can do all this. Okay, so what I've got here is a simple drum part, simple 4-4 beat, no accents, no nothing, everything at 100% full velocity. And if I just play that, you can listen how boring that really is. So let's just hit play. Very simple, straightforward drum beat. So let's take a look at how we can make that a little bit more interesting. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my open hats which at the moment they are just playing 100% velocity on everything. So just to start off with, I'm going to take everything and I'm going to bring that down ever so slightly. Just to make sure that everything we've got is all sitting at the same level. So everything is at 127. So velocity is full, so let's just bring that down ever so slightly so we're not just hitting everything full blast. That'll do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to select every other hi-hat beat from the second beat on. So second, fourth, sixth, and so on. Now I could do that manually, or as I've done in the previous little video where we look at a little JS uh, script plugin we've got available to us with uh, the Reaper Stash, which I'd recommend. I'll link that in the video in the, the comment section below. Check that out. What I'm going to do is hit my MIDI note selector, and I'm going to use this to select every second note, and I'll just go down until I get the right the hi-hat, so there we go. And I'm going to say an offset of one. So in other words, I want it to be offset from the first and third and fifth and so on to be the second, fourth and sixth. So you can see now they've been highlighted. So I'll close that down. And what I'm going to do is bring the velocity down on those ever slightly. So what we're going to get is a slightly sort of swing rhythmic pattern going on there. And if I just rewind that and play it, you'll kind of hear the difference in the hi-hats. They're not full on all the time they gain an accent on the second beat so already just a little bit more interesting but we can make it a little a lot more interesting instead of just sort of keeping everything on the hi-hats which is kind of a bit boring how about we take all that and we take it up onto one of the floor toms to make it a bit more interesting so let's just take that up we'll run that up to the floor toms and now we've got the accent on the second beat, like we had originally with the hi-hats. But now we're going to be using the floor tom to add some, some oomph to it to make it a little bit more interesting. So, it's already a little bit more interesting. Now, a lot of good drummers will keep time with their left foot with just their hi-hats going. instead so of an open and closed hi-hat, which we can use the as we got in this particular instance, and I'm using Easy, Drum, uh, Easy Drummer 2, if you're wondering what I'm using. And you could say you've got the, the hat's foot splash. So we could easily say, well, let's have the drummer counting every quarter note. So we've got that sort of rhythm going on in the background. We'll select all those and we'll drop the velocity down. We won't just be lightly tapping on those. So now we get a mixture of the accent on the second, fourth, and uh, six beat and so on with the floor tom. We're getting the pattern of the snare and the kick drum. And we're also keeping time with our left foot now with the hi-hats. Now, as I said in the previous video, when it comes to sequencing drums, you have to remember that pretty much all drummers have four different appendages they can use. They've got two feet, two hands. They can't hit six or seven different things simultaneously. So if you want to, to have drums that sound realistic, you kind of have to abide by those, those laws. But obviously, you know, when it comes to music, you can do whatever you want. But if you want it to sound realistic like a real drummer's playing, you need to think, can they physically do this particular action? And in this instance, yes, they can. So if we just rewind that back now and we'll have the foot splash keep in time, we'll have the floor toms. Let's just hit that. Now I've taken the, the hi-hats that are being controlled with the foot down in the mix because I just want that to be there. So it's, it's subtle. You don't want everything to be in your face. So we've got a bit more interesting beat already. So let's take a look at how we can improve that even more so. 
So how about we start adding some extra little things in? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ha add a hi hat, an open hi hat, being hit by the this this uh, the stick, so we get a sort of tss kind of effect, just to give it a little bit more interest. So I'm going to use the open hatch three in this instance, and I'm going to come over, and we're going to say there and by there. So what we're going to find is when we hit those open hi hats, that it'll choke it almost immediately because we've got this sort of foot splash hi-hat going on. So let's just have a listen to that. So we add an extra little bit of rhythmic pattern in to make it a bit more interesting. Actually, I need to put that by there. Let's try that again. So we've already got some extra dynamics being added to this. Now, obviously, we could put some hi hats and sorry, some cymbal crashes and things like that in there. But I'm just going to work on this now for the drum beat itself. When we create this into a full blown MIDI pattern, then I start adding the, the sort of the splashes and the crashes and things like that in there. So, how about we add an extra couple of kick drums in there? So let's just say let's try double beat there. Oh, this is neat. Double beat there. And we'll go for a double beat there. Okay, let's have a little listen to that. Okay, so we're getting a bit more interest again. Now, obviously, if you want to increase the number of beats that you can put in there, you want to get sort of accents on the, the hi-hats or accents on the snare and things like that and ghost notes, you can increase the grid size at the moment. We look at it at um, 16th notes. So let's just say I want to add in some ghost notes now. So on the snare, I want to create a ghost note on the second beat. So I'm going to insert that, and then I'm going to drop that down a lot lower. And I'll do the same on this one, and drop that down a lot lower. Let's have a little listen to that. So we're now getting some, some ghost note accents on there. A lot more dynamic. Nothing particularly complicated about this. We're just building upon those basic foundation elements. We're taking that simple 4-4 beat. We're adjusting some of the, the actual drums that we're hitting. Just get a bit more dynamic with it. Okay, so let's have a little bit of fun now with these floor toms that we're using. Let's add some extra beats in there. Let's take some different toms in there and let's just get a little bit more of a rhythm rhythm going to this pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these beats and I'm going to add some extra ones in there and we're going to reposition which tom they're using. So I'm going to take this floor tom, hit, hit, let me take this one and we'll take that up to, we'll go to the rack tom too and we'll add an extra beat in now on this one. So let's have a little listen to that. So we've got Let's repeat that pattern over here as well. So we'll do the same thing. Let's have a little listen to that now. So what you can see is that we've created a far more interesting beat builder upon some simple foundations. Now, this is nothing that you couldn't build up yourself. And what I would recommend is what I tend to do when I'm, I'm writing music is I will create that simple beat that allows me to record the scratch tracks. And then once I've got everything in position the way I like it, then I'll come back in and I'll start fleshing out the drums. I'll start adding extra beats in there, giving a little bit of off timing, get a little bit creative with it, adding drum rolls in there. You know, it, it's the easiest way of doing it for me because I can build those solid foundations up into something more interesting. Well, I hope you found this little tutorial useful on making more interesting drum beats. We'll take a look at it in future videos, how to elaborate upon this and create even more complex beats. We may look at different timings, syncopated timings and things like that. But hopefully what this has done is it's given you a good idea of what you can do with your drums from a simple foundation. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit thumbs up if you thought it was a good video or the thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it. 
If you've got any comments, feedback or suggestions for future tutorials, please put those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and we try to get back to you as quick as possible. Until next time, happy mixing.